Hi guys! Got a really exciting one for you today, so... Uh, many of you know. You may have spotted in the Horizon World Desktop Editor. There's a new function which allows us for the very first time uh, to import animated 3D models. Very exciting. Um, so this tutorial is going to be a very, very simple introduction to that. We're going to deal with a single armature with a few bones on it. And we're going to run through the full workflow from Blender up into Horizons. Um, it's not a tutorial on texturing or any anything else really. Uh, it is just simply that. So we're going to make a simple mesh, make a simple armature. We're going to attach that mesh to the armature, which is known as parenting. We're going to go through a very simple keyframe animation. We're going to export it. And lastly, we're going to import it into Horizon World, so you'll see when we do that, it'll absolutely come to life. Um, we'll go through some of the concepts in there, like weight painting as well. Um, yeah, stay tuned. It's gonna be a good one. <laughs> in just a sec. <laughs> hey guys, welcome to the channel. You hear enough surface level talk about the mess abyss from complete outsiders. I'm here to show you what really goes on for the perspective of someone who actually lives it, runs clubs, and arranges social events across multiple platforms. I explore worlds, meet new and interesting people everywhere I go, and I bring you exclusive sneak peeks of what's happening inside. I also live stream regularly, so you can experience it with me in real time, and I make tutorials to help you build your own VR clubs, hangouts, and art spaces. If you're ready to see the massive from the inside, hit that like button, subscribe, and follow me on Instagram and TikTok for even more content. Let's get started. Okay guys, um, so in this video we're purely going to use Blender and the Horizon World Desktop Editor. I won't be using any fancy or expensive design studios, no subscriptions or anything. So I uh, will be using Blender version 4.5. Um, which is the latest one. I also, just have a little check. When you go to import a new 3D object or model into Horizons, make sure you've got the model animations uh, checkbox. Most people have got this. Um, some may have not. Make sure you're running on the latest version of the Horizon Worlds desktop which really should have it. Anywho, um, there's a bit of a misnomer just to clear this up about baking. Baking animations. Um, so it happens automatically these days in Blender when you export via the standard uh, FBX export function and um, so you don't need to worry about going into the object menus or baking as you might have seen on other tutorials it, it just happens for you so that just got even easier um anyway on we plow so let's uh, start a new project uh, and in that project the first thing we need to do is just select the camera the light uh, and the, the cube and just delete them all um, let me, we're completely blank, then just add a simple sort of cube just to start us off. Um, we're going to keep it simple in this one, I don't want to go through a really complex mesh. Because uh, I think the simpler I keep this, the easier it is going to be for you to learn if this is your first time dealing with this stuff. Um, so the first thing we're going to do is press the S key and then the Y key and stretch it along the Y axis. Um, which as you can see is now transformed into a cuboid, then we press tab to edit. And then we press F3. And we find the loop cut and slide and when we do that we simply move the mouse wheel upwards to create more loop cuts and that will allow our cuboid to bend uh, without that unfortunately <laughs> bending is not magic if the vertices aren't there it, it can't bend very well so we need to give it that extra sort of help um the next thing we should be doing, guys, is to add uh, a, an armature, I believe. So, we're going to just go to the overhead viewer sack. And then we're going to pull up that add menu. We're going to go into armature. Then add a simple bone. <laughs> just a simple bone. Now, we can't see that because that's actually spawned at the world origin. Um, so, we can switch to sort of an X-ray there. And we can have a little look inside there. So we can see that bone. It doesn't look like much of a bone. That's because it's pointing upwards. So if we rotate the camera around, we can see it. Uh, and then we're able to select it. And then if we press the R key to rotate it, the X key to constrain that rotation on the X axis, and then minus 90 just to turn it. And then that's now going to be a bone that is oriented in the direction of our cuboid. And then we press G to move it uh, all the way to the top. 
Make sure the little ball joint's just sticking out the top a bit. It's very important. Um, and then we're just simply going to resize that bone a little. Um, you don't have to have a million bones. Obviously, the more bones you have here, uh, and we'll do that by extruding. So we get the lower ball joint at the thinner end. Once we're in edit mode, sorry, we have to press tab to go into edit mode. Uh, and that'll allow us to then uh, extrude more bones. The connected bones, they just sort of spawn off each other. And you just kind of press E, drag, click, press E again, drag, click, and you can form a chain of bones. Um, more bones, smoother, smoother sort of bend. But really, don't overcomplicate it. Stick to about maybe three or four at this stage. Uh, you don't need a million bats in here. It's harder to manage. Um, and you'll still get a great effect even with three or four bones, to be honest. Um, you'll see when we come onto keyframing, you do have to animate the individual bones. So it's very, very important. Great. So now we've got that. You can see that the armature, which is our set of bones, and the cube are sort of separate. Now, if I select them, both, but I make sure the armature is the last thing I select, so it's light orange. And then I move over the main viewpoint and I hit Control and P. And I have to choose automatic weights, guys. So we're actually going to parent the cube to the armature with automatic weights. But what does that mean? So weight painting, this is a, this is a subject in itself. But we'll go through it very, very briefly just to give you a visual example. So when we say uh, automatic weight paint, what happens? is Blender will work out from the armature and its position inside another object. But it'll roughly guess what bone needs to influence what vertex groups. So the way to see this is if you select the object and then go up to the top left and select weight paints, you'll actually see uh, as we go into the data on this and we can select the different vertex groups that apply to each bone, you can actually see as we, as we choose them, you can see the influence they have. So obviously red is high influence, it means if that bone moves it's going to take those vertices with it. Blue means no influence at all. And then the yellow and green is like slight influence. So you can see the bones can semi-influence different areas of the mesh for a bit more of a smoother sort of transformation. Okay, that's weight painting uh, explained. So. That's a complex subject in itself, we won't be really going into that, but if we just carry on with the automatic weights for now, um, what you'll see uh, is that it's actually now moved that cube object inside the armature up in the hierarchy at the top right. Uh, and that's now parented, they refer to that as parented. Um, so that means the armature now has influence over the vertices on that cube. So, we need to select the uh, the armature, okay, just at the top right, and then fly across to the top left and change that from object mode to pose mode. Okay, now we're in pose mode. If we move that armature, it's gonna make the child cuboid actually move with it, which is really cool. Um, have a little play with that, just remember to undo it and bring it back to straight because we're about to keyframe that. So down the bottom in the middle, just above the timeline, there's a little red dot you have to click. It might be grey, but when you click it, it goes red. Um, when you do that, it's going to track the movement in pose mode of these bones and obviously the mesh around it. So as we, first of all, just at the top right of that timeline, set the start to 1 and the end to 100 because we don't need the default 250 frames. That's going to be crazy. Um, but as we move that little blue bar around to different parts of the timeline, we can actually um, start reposing those bones. Now notice each bone when selected will show its keyframes on the timeline, so it will show a little orange or yellow dot um, depending on your theme. Um, and it's actually tracking it using that, that auto keyframe, which is really, really cool. So it means as you just select each bone and a different point in time, what it'll do is it'll uh, tween, uh, and when we say tween, it means it fills in the blank. So between this position or that position and that rotation, uh, it'll actually fill in the gaps there. Really importantly here, we're not moving anything, okay? We're rotating bones. And because these bones are all connected, uh, they know that when you move a, a parent bone, if you like, it's going to move the, the child bone with it. So when you move it sort of a child bone, it has no influence over the parent, but uh, it obviously influences the model. So this is, again, quite a complex subject. And we're keeping this simple by doing it with a simple shape with one set of bones. But you can imagine if you come to do humanoids at some point, you've got to have like, legs and arms and, and heads moving and all that jazz. 
Um, so this can be sh this can get very very complicated very quickly, but we're sticking with the simple stuff today, guys. It's a quick tutorial, not trying to confuse you. Um, and you can see when I press the spacebar, it actually plays the animation as I've sort of gone through selecting and rotating each bone at different points in time. So then you go back and make some more adjustments here, um, just to give it a little bit more flick and variation, make it a bit more obvious what's going on. Um, let's give it another preview. Now, obviously, you can drag that slider back and forth to sort of see what it's doing as well, which is kind of cool. Okay. So, what are we going to do now, guys? <laughs> Very simply, we are going to select over on the top right, the armature right down to the cube. So we select all the objects that we want to export. And then we go into File, Export, and FBX, okay? And that takes us into the FBX exporter. This is the bit that really counts. We've got to get this right. Okay, so first of all, we've got to give my file a name. So as I'm typing that, um, you can actually resize this window, just in case you didn't... If you forgot to select the objects behind, you can actually resize this, this file, see window in a bit so you can access it. Um, and really what we want to do is we want to export the selected objects only, okay? So we're going to zoom in there a bit for you. Um, so we hit selected objects, and that's only going to basically export the selected objects we've highlighted. Now, also just for a bit of extra measure, we're going to make sure we only do the mesh and the armature. So you shift and click on this, these options, and it'll make sure we're not pulling anything else in that could cause problems. Um, so in terms of uh, other other options that we need here, so um. I think for the transforms, we're going to leave them as is, but when we expand out geometry, we're going to have a quick look at that. There's, there's really nothing in there that we care about, to be honest, so that's fine. Now we move on to armature. This is the important bit. So we need to turn off leaf bones, okay? Just disable those, and then we need to add in the deform bones. Right. Okay, once you've done that, on to the next bit. So we're going to leave all four of these next checkboxes under animation ticked, but here's the bit that's in the matter guidance. So under sampling rate, leave that as one. It's very, very important. But the simplify, simplify needs to be set to zero, though it's not its default value here. So once we've set that to zero, just hit the export FBX button. And that's now saved it. That's it, right? So all we have to do now, that's all the difficult stuff, all you have to do now is flick into the um, Horizon Worlds desktop editor. We simply have to just import it. So uh, again, with your my assets selected down the bottom in the asset library, choose an appropriate folder, and then go to um, go to import your file. So to do that, you hit Add New and 3D Model. Okay, and once you've clicked that, um, so first of all, you need to hit that little blue plus button in the middle, which says. Um, Choose files on your device. When you do that, it'll pop open a file browser window, which will skip to you here, but uh, you'll see it will actually add the SBX that you've just created from Blender. Now we need to disable the uh, preserve offset pivots because we, we don't we don't want it to preserve the offset pivots here. Uh, and then we need to also import the animations experimental. Very, very important, this one. If you don't do this, it won't read the animation data. So once you've done that, you just simply click import give it a second and it'll just it's very quick there's no textures on this model and it's not very complex so it won't take long and with only 100 trays of animation as well we're good so um once that's imported we simply just drag and drop it in the scene and watch what happens nothing else is needed at this point um that there, there is actually there is a slight bubble here so um because i forgot to apply the scaling in blender um at, right at the start after stretching that cube um it's kind of weirdly left on the way in, but it's very, very easily fixed, and we'll do that now. So if you select the actual object, just make sure the scale of that object is set to uh, 1, 1, 1, and it'll be the actual scale that it is. So <laughs> we'll do that just now here, and then you'll see it'll actually <laughs> decompress into its normal shape. There he is. There's our wiggly, uh, wiggly tentacle. <laughs> uh -huh. So we're also just going to sort of pull that right back down. So you could drag it down or, or you can just set the position to zero, zero, zero as well. That's probably the quick way. And that'll just pull it down to the center of the world. And if we press F, we, we can zoom in on that item there. And there we have it. We have our a very simple animated FBX. Uh, enjoy. So, I mean, you can... <laughs> One thing to note actually is when you do jump around on it, you'll notice that the collision doesn't expect doesn't behave as you might expect. Um, 
yeah, it's a bit weird. I wouldn't rely on it for like collidable platforms, but um, it's it, it's it's you know <laughs> you can definitely stand on bits of it for sure. Um, okay, so uh, yeah, what you probably saw um, at the start of the video was obviously a more complex model. Now I won't be doing that in this video. Uh, intentionally, as I said, I don't want to sort of uh, overly sort of uh, make this a much longer modeling tutorial but uh, you can see here I did make a sort of a, a, a tentacle shape um, and I used exactly the same process but I put three bones in it used the automatic sort of weight assignment when parenting it and there we go I've done a really interesting sort of tentacle shape going on here so um yeah sky's the limit guys I'm really looking forward to seeing what you guys come up with I hope this is helpful I know a lot of people right now are, are looking for answers on how to do this so I'm hoping this helps those of you who want to make your own models in Blender um, let me know, drop something in the comments, give me a subscribe, a like, I'll be doing more of these. If you've got any suggestions for more things as well, let me know, I'll do this too. Okay, thank you very much, I'll see you in the next one.